Texas 4-H Entomology has started an insect photography unit this year, and this is a quick presentation to provide some tips. Uh, you should know up front, you don't have to have a fancy camera. It doesn't cost a lot of money. A cell phone camera will work fine, or a point and shoot. So it's not about the gear you use to take the picture. It's about how you take the picture. Probably the most important thing in taking a picture is it has to be in focus, especially of insects, because you want to show all their features. Um, so pay uh, particular attention to holding the camera still and focusing on the insect. There are times when you don't want to focus critically necessarily, and here's an example. Alex Will shot this. He intentionally used a, sh a slow shutter speed and a slightly blurred focus to show the motion in the ants. And this is an excellent photograph, but it, it's really unusual and it's a great use of out of focus images. The second most important thing probably is to fill the frame with the insect as much as possible consistent with good composition. The image on the left essentially has a diagonal line from the lower left to the upper right and the insect occupies a pretty good percentage of the frame. Uh, that's a good shot. And notice the background is blurred out so it's not busy and competing with the uh, image of the bee itself. But on the right we have a shot that essentially is a shot of fingers that happen to have an insect on them. That's because the insect is not very large in the frame. So fill the frame if you can. If you can't fill the frame there's another thing called cropping and that is you take the picture and then when you process it you cut out the edges and just leave in what's of interest. And here's an example of a robber fly which the image on the left it would be kind of a boring picture if the whole thing were present. So I cropped out the edges and just left the insect itself and that's kind of a compelling picture because it's filled with the insect. Another thing that's important is almost always you want to focus on the eyes of the insect. You may get other parts of the body in or out of focus, but the eyes really do need to be in focus. And the fly on the left, you can see the eyes are sharp and the front of the head is pretty sharp. But then as you move back toward the back of the fly, it kind of gets out of focus. Uh, which is okay because your your eye, your eye, when you look at it, is going to go to the eye of the insect. And that wasp on the right just kind of makes the point. The, the abdomen and the back part of the body are kind of blurred out, but the eyes are sharp. And your eyes are going to go right to the insect's eyes. If you can, do multiple angles. Um, the standard shot would be the one on the left from the top of the insect. It's a good picture. The one on the right is of the same insect and you can see that it's got a long uh, beak which it uses to feed on the plants. It's tucked in underneath the body and it's sensing with that little sliver going down into that that plant it's sensing what that plant is nutritionally and you can see that the feet on the far right side you can see the tarsi and the tarsal hooks and this is essentially more of an action shot because it's shot from the side but the eyes are still in focus action is great. If It's hard to get in a picture, but if you can do it, go for it. Uh, on the left we have a robber fly that's captured another fly and is, e is eating it as prey. And on the right we have a rejuviated predator that's captured uh, its, me its meal. And you can see that it's sucking the juices out of the body of the insect. So action is a good thing. It's, it's harder to do, but it really makes for a compelling image. Sometimes there's not enough light and you need to use a flash and you also need to use a flash if you've got a dark insect on a dark background because you have to make the insect itself stand out from the background a little bit. So if you need to experiment with flash, the bottom line in learning insect photography, don't be afraid of failure. That's the way you learn. Try it. Learn from your mistakes. You'll get better. It gets easier and easier the more you do it.